Welcome back! In the last couple of years, we've seen some great mini PCs that don't break the bank. We can use them to watch 4K Netflix and YouTube, but the mini PC we're looking at today manages to do a lot more for $155. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribe, seriously. This is what came. And inside, a box. And this is very well wrapped. So we got this box from AliExpress, and it was actually one of the cheapest ones on there. The series, mini PC, Min minis, B-Link, by uh, B-Link. It's a very remarkable box with nothing on it. Remarkably blank, like my tidy whitey. Let's pull it out and have a look. First thing we're greeted with is the manual. English, German, Spanish, Italian, French, Russian, and Japanese. This just shows how to use the mounts, switching the SSD, and things like that. They should spice it up. Have pretty girls on every page. We have a one meter HDMI cable. The power adapter. This one's running at 12 volts, 3000 milliamps. We have a vase mount. With this we can attach the mini PC to the back of the monitor. Here's a short HDMI cable. And nothing else but the mini PC. So here it is. This is the B-Link S12 N95 mini PC. And out of the box we already have a warning, which I'm not going to read. On the top there's a nice texture, very similar to an expensive purse. And on the front we have the power button, a headphone jack, two USB 3.2 ports, and a tiny CMOS reset button. The side is very holy. On the back we have two more USB ports, one gigabit Ethernet cable, two HDMI ports capable of 4K at 60Hz, a plug for power, and a Kensington. Kensington? On this side we've got some more holes. And underneath we've got this little rubber thing. Uh, yeah. It feels like a tong. I don't know. And there's two mount holes at the bottom. It's about time for a size comparison. Here's the S12. Slightly smaller than the B-Link GK Mini. And it's dwarfed by the GK3V. Here's a Game Boy Advance. A teddy bear. And a Roybush tea bag. The B-Link S12 is just under four Roybush tea bags big. Are you still drinking the toilet water? So what kind of specs does this thing have? Well, we got the cheapest one for $155. It has the Intel N95 chip, 8GB RAM, and a 256GB SSD. Since we've bought it, it's gone up $5, but there are extra options for storage space, memory, or even the N100 chip, which gives you more power for graphics. Here's a quick glimpse of the other specs, but who cares? Let's try this thing. On first boot, we need to go through a few settings, changing the language and things like that. After a few minutes, you'll be good to go. So here we are, Windows 11 Pro, legit, and it updates no problem. You can also see the system specs, and everything looks pretty good here. We have 206 gigabytes free to mess about with, that is, until it updates. The Wi-Fi is working very well, we can use Edge to download many free tools on Ninite.com. Click what you want, get your Ninite, and you're sorted. We can make graphics with Krita, a free tool much like Photoshop. Use free office alternatives like OpenOffice or LibreOffice. Or check 4K YouTube on this 1080 monitor. Of course, Netflix works too. As does shopping for weird stuff on AliExpress. Wow. Here's some data from HWinfo. And even with the fan, it kept silent and reasonably cool. Now the benchmarks. What we can take away from this is the CPU is actually decent, and the bottleneck will be the GPU. Let's check out some gameplay. First up, Brill Force. Streets of Rage 4. Return to Monkey Island. What should we do next? We gotta get scurvy dogs. I, I can't believe you never had one. Those glasses are thicker than the layer of grease on the floor. <laughs> Moving on to a game more demanding, 
Here's Thimbleweed Park. This is a great game. We interrupt our hostile takeover non-stop music with this imp Welcome back, Dolores. How's life being an important game developer? On to 3D games now. Retro Kart Rush. GTA 5. At 720p, all options are normal. This is running at around 30 frames per second. If we try bumping up the settings to 1080p, we get around 18 FPS. Here's Rocket League at 1080p. From performance settings here, we're getting around 30 FPS. CSGO, 720p. Apex Legends. Some games like Valorant and Fortnite refused to run, as the Intel video didn't play well with DirectX 12. Let's see what's inside. The case is held together by four screws. We get to find out what this little rubber thing's for. Ribbon for her pleasure. And this is very tidy. We have a two and a half inch hard drive bay. Eh? It's a little thin, so the intention is probably for SSDs. But the beauty of this is no screws are needed. We're given crucial DDR4 and an unbranded NVMe. And if we pull it up, we can see it also supports other sizes. We had a look for another memory slot, but we just couldn't find it. So single channel memory is the max. Your biggest fan, crack my sofa. Let's check the BIOS. And surprisingly enough, there's a lot here. But as Batacera is installed to the 2.5 inch SSD, we'll only use the BIOS to boot that up. If you're not aware of Batacera, it's an easy way to play retro games using emulation. Even though Bluetooth was fine in Windows, Batacera probably needs a driver update to get Bluetooth working, so you'll need a dongle or a wired controller. Let's get into some gameplay. 8-bit computers like the Amstrad and the C64 are running flawlessly. And so is our favourite, the Commodore Amiga. Here's Reaper on MS-DOS. And a total classic, GTA. And of course, ScumVM also has no problems with his machine. Uh -huh. A secret passage. P-Man on open board. Capcom vs SNK3. This is actually Windows emulation running Mugen. So we're now going to move on to consoles and arcade gaming. Check it flag for the Atari Jaguar. And Road Rash for 3DO. Moving on to Sega now. First up is Mega Drive, and of course, this runs flawlessly. Daytona USA, Sega Saturn. And even though it's not the best port, Saturn games are running at full speed. As our games for the Sega Dreamcast.
Marvel vs. Capcom 2. A game that is always overshadowed by Capcom vs. SNK 2. This is the arcade game running on Sega Naomi. Metal Slug 6 on the Thomas Wave. This game runs full speed at 30 FPS, but if you want 60 FPS at 69 widescreen, check out Metal Slug Anthology for PSP. Virtua Soccer for Model 2. Daytona USA 2 running on Model 3. We'll now move on to some Nintendo systems. Here's Donkey Kong Country on the SNES. And this mini PC has no problems handling N64. We should really change up the gear. Hit some GameCube, which runs surprisingly well. Full speed, Barry Car Double Dash. And outside the first second of the track, F-Zero GX runs exceptionally well. And if you're playing this on a widescreen monitor, make sure you check it in the options. Much better. But then we have the game Rogue Squadron 3. I don't know what's going on here, but this intro sequence doesn't run very well. At least the AAA titles work well. Here's WarioWare. As we don't want to stick to the GameCube, we should move on to the Wii. Rhythm Tenkoku. Mario Kart Wii runs quite well, but sometimes there are slight dips. All options are at default, so there may be some fiddling that you can do to speed things up. Moving on to Sony. PlayStation 1 is no problem. We can even use the Duck Station emulator. And for PSP, we can really push it here. With all settings set to high, we can get full speed, even when raising the resolution to around 6 to 7 times native. As we have the boxes for the PSP checked, let's go to Outer Space with Gradius 5 on the PlayStation 2.
or Ridge Racer 5. Tekken 5. Wheel of Katamari runs great. GTA Vice City. And even Gran Turismo 4 can run at full speed if we play with the emulator options. We'll have a video guide showing you how to do this soon, so please be sure to hit that subscribe and the bell. Subscribble for a chance of a back rub. I am John Luke Super Stub. And the same applies for God of War 2. Oh, and Xbox also runs. Not full speed, but close enough. So what do we really think about this box? Honestly, this is great value. We're certain it'd make a good family PC or something for emulation. You could smash this in a cabinet and it'd run many arcade games without breaking a sweat. As for the cons, the GPU needs a bit of a bump. We're really happy with this mini PC and hopefully soon we'll see a smooth CSGO frame rate at under $200. As we finish with some blurred footage that didn't make the cut, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Thanks guys, you're the best. No. I'm the best. The best at what? At. Uh, at. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> anyway, this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra. See you soon, Pinky Swag.